Uh, so the conversation has moved to another level because we have our special guest in the studio with us to have this conversation on salary negotiation. Remember, I said I have a lot of questions that I want to ask and I cannot wait to get into it. But first, let me introduce my guest. Well, she is a friend of the family because she's been here um, on tea or coffee to help us break conversations like this down. We have Sheyi. Uh, we have Sheyi Olulade. She is a human resource practitioner yes. and um, Sheyi has worked in people development and management field for over 20 years as a business improvement engineer, leading process improvement interventions as an organizational development um, specialist. She holds a Bachelor's uh, of Science degree in Mass Communication and also a Master of Science degree in Organizational Behavior both from the prestigious University of Lagos. She is a certified senior professional human resource practitioner and a trained psychometrician. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to come around. It's always nice to have you. We're yeah. always learning so many things. Thank you coffee. so much. Now, yeah. I already started asking you questions before uh, yeah. we came back live, but I'm going to ask you that question again. So while yeah. we were taking the basic tips on um, how you can negotiate salary, there was a particular one that said, ask. And of course, uh, the popular uh, sentence in the Holy Book says, ask and it shall, shall be, given be given unto you. However, a lot of people fear asking because of so many things. There's that sentimental um, thing behind it that, oh, if I ask, they may think that I'm asking for too much mm. or I'm uh, feeling entitled mm. and all of those things. But here is my question. Why do companies or managers or supervisors wait until, now, I mean some companies wait for um, employees to come forward to ask, knowing fully well that they deserve this promotion. Why do they wait for them to come and negotiate and negotiate and have conversations with them before they decide that, you know what, let me give you this raise? Okay. Well, to start with, there's nothing wrong with you asking. There's really nothing wrong with you, especially when you know you deserve it. You understand? And um, it comes from desire. Um, one of my former bosses used to say something to us. said, if you keep quiet, you get what you deserve. Hmm. But if you speak out, which means you ask, in, as this case refer, refers, um, you get what you desire. So if you desire it, then you ask. Um, but I always say, before you ask, do your homework. All right. And do you, you know, the work environment and the business environment is a place of value exchange, right? Mm. So um, the, the entity, which is the organization you're working for, was created to give value, mm. to, to meet a need. So there's an identified customer, right? Now, in the employee-employer relation, employer is your customer, and you are his own customer as well. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, so yes. value must exchange. Yes. So if you have that understanding, then you ask yourself, to what degree have I added value? Mm. Right? Okay. Um, don't also forget that you are also one unit out of the whole. Like I was saying before we came on live, <clears throat> excuse me, I said something, I said, organizations may set out and project a sales or billions of one billion. Hmm. Maybe 2020, as a 2020 October, that was their envision. Mm -hmm. And the value of one billion at that time is not the same value of one billion by as at this is October yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. Why? Because for them, I mean, we, we live in the VUCA world. I mean, it's more VUCA than any other thing. In Nigeria, it's constantly VUCA anyway. Yes. You know, and Government policies and so many things are affecting the business. Mm -hmm. So you as an individual may look at it and say, I clocked in 800 million already. If I buy quarter two, add, you gave me a target of 500, I clocked in 800, mm -hmm. right? So why don't I get, I must get a raise. Mm -hmm. No, I don't forget, maybe by the profit margin of the business, the 1 billion as at that time, when they looked at the cost of running the business, direct cost of running the sales, Executing the sales, I'm taking you into some business yes, economics. Yes. Running the sales was 40%. Hmm. That, okay, then out of that 40%, then you now start looking at company operating costs, and we're saying, okay, our net profit will be like 15%. And you find out that by May, 
Yes, we hit our target of 1 billion, but we're at 0 percent. Because there were other incidentals that we did not recognize, mm -hmm. one, two, that caught us on our wares. And of course, we know you deserve it, but there's nothing we can do about it right mm -hmm. now. But there are other creative ways. Don't forget, salary is just the direct compensation. Yes. It's just one part of compensation. Mm. So there are other things that can compensate for your efforts. Mm. It could be um, in terms of um, a good work environment, a nice tool, or uh, like these days, like uh, I was listening to what your colleague said about flexible working hours yeah. and all. It could be different things. I have seen an organization where an employee, a, a, a client needed something that, of course, the company does not do. And the manager of the employee who was in that office knows that this employee sews and mm -hmm. does this and does something nice for organizations, knows the side also. Now, one could say, is that ethical? The point is, it depends on what you call unethical and ethical. Okay. So for the manager, he looked at it and said, look, this guy, the more we had value to him, the more he stays with us. Okay, can we send somebody to you? And then he's telling him, he said, ah, that company wants to make XYZ. And I know you do this. Why don't you speak to them? Don't you think that staff will be grateful? Very that's grateful. Also, that's also a way of compensation. Okay. You understand? Yes. However, you're going to do it for them. You must not stand in the way of our own business and your work. Your normal work, yes. Your normal work. Yeah. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to encourage us that we can pay you that much. You understand? So there's so many ways you want to look at compensation. Mm -hmm. Like these days, I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, since the past few months, uh, beginning of the year, I've always been telling anybody, you must recognize the gig economy. Hmm. You understand? That's a discussion for another day. <laughs> so there's really nothing wrong in that um, you can ask but when asking make sure that you do a self-evaluation and a system evaluation mm. you understand yes yeah. yes I really like that you've mentioned that because um, you know a lot of people struggle with mm. wanting to move to their manager or their mm. HR and mm. say ah ma sa mm. um, I've been working for this amount of years and mm. I would like that you pay me this amount of money and all mm. of that they get they get scared is it mm. is it the work environments that like, makes them feel that way or, you know, something else? Okay, it depends on the culture of the organization. Mm. If you have an organization that has an open culture, like, like for me, um, yesterday I was at um, one of my associations, um, you know, and the way everybody saw me playing, they were like, ah, what kind of, I said, that is me. When I got home yesterday, all the people that collected my uh, number and those who I collected their card, I text them, how are you? Are you home yet? Are you this? How now? What's up? Even with the younger ones, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to give you access. Hmm. So you have the leeway to ask. Of course, we understand that some organizations are very traditional. So in fact, some will say that the more reasons why a lot of organizations will say first name. First name is to remove that barrier mm. of no access. You understand? It's like you have your chairman and the IEPA group decides to say first name. I mean, of course, for you, when they say, ah, call him your Drew, mm -hmm. even you will be first scared to say, ah, hello, how far? <laughs> you, you understand? Yes. But by the time you get used to it, you realize that. The first word brings both of you on the same level for discussions. Mm. Don't forget, don't lose sight of respect. Of course. But for discussions to say, I need to have a chat with you. Mm. I need to have this. Now, the reasons why people get scared again is you are not self-aware. Mm. Okay. You are not self-aware. If you are confident in yourself, and then you have built your communication skills, your intra-communication and your intercommunication, you have a problem. And then you have built relationship. Don't wait until when, you know, like I, I said before we came on live, I said most structured organizations have feedback mechanism. All right. So where you have your, some do it in an informal way, some do it in a formal way. But definitely a good organization that has HR, 
even if they don't, they don't have a child, they have it outsourced, or they have a system of monitoring, they will have appraisal session. Mm -hmm. And usually, discussions of negotiations must happen during appraisal. Now, what happens is some organizations only have it once. And for me, I feel sorry for such organizations. Of course, that's what you have in the civil service. Mm. Why? Because they are big. That, that's a bureaucratic culture. Yeah. And they are big. So it's okay, even though it's bad. That's, I mean, we are all experiencing the feedback anyway. We can see the backlash. Yeah. And, but for small organizations and even medium scale organizations, it's always better you have it quarterly. Now, because you have a hybrid workforce. Mm. It's something that is ongoing. Yes. You understand? People are working remote. People, people are, are working physically. remote and then you're getting feedback, you're monitoring and all. Yes. Right? So when you have a situation, let's say, for example, your organization has performance review sessions every quarter. Mm. You understand? You're, they give you a work goal each year and break it down into quarterly milestones. Right? And you see that I've hit my milestone this quarter. The first quarter is always, how are you doing? Are you okay? Is there anything we need to change? Yeah. I, uh, I need to do this. By second quarter, even your entire target for the year, let's say monetary, you eat it. Hmm. You understand? Of course, by the time you're sitting down to have that discussion, you're like, ah, Oga, what's the need for me? I know, I, I know it's likely I get a bonus at the end of the year, but what, how about salary review? Hmm. But of course, because the company also has a policy don't forget it starts from policy. Company Some policy. policies, are, I always say it's always better if organizations have it written. Yes. And you as an individual staff, I've been in this game for over 20 years. Most times your, organ, your staff policy is your Bible, right? Most employees don't go back. Once they give you at the beginning of the year, you come in uh, upon resumption, you sign, I acknowledge, blah, 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 blah. They sign, they keep it in your file, they give you a copy. The employee just keeps it in one place. Meanwhile, the company is dealing with you based on that. Hmm. So you must always refer, I want to ask for this. What does the company's policy say? Now, there are some policies that are not written, like in Nigeria and in our homes. We all have rules and laws. Ah, uh, you've heard it now. Ah, you know in this house we don't. But it's not written anywhere. Yeah, yes. You they understand? that you know. And you they understand. expect that you should know. Yeah. So you must know the policy. The written one and unwritten. Hmm. So that you, when you're going in to have the discussion, you're going from the place of knowledge. You are informed. So by the time they are giving it to you like this, you are hitting them this way, you know, and, and all. So, but the policy says this. And I think I have done, because you can't ask for a review when you're not a performer. Ah, in fact, yeah. if, you, if I was working with you in such an organization and you've been there for long, I would have kicked you out since. Wow. Because organizations don't, I mean, you are, you are brought in to add value. To, the, to create, to add value to the organization, to create value for end users, yeah. right? Yes. So it's not about the certification you have. Mm. Because some people will come in from the point of view as I have written these certifications and I'm looking at you, I'm written that certification, I'm not a this, I'm not a that, I read about this, I went for this course. I'm like, okay, before you went for the course, where were you? Hmm. After you went for the course, what has happened? What has changed? You understand? Yes. Of course, by the time I to organizations see that you've updated, you've upgraded yourself, and they're seeing traction. Even they themselves are looking at, uh, before a competitor gets this guy, hmm. or before this guy thinks of leaving, they too are trying to trap you down. Every organization likes a star. I mean, it has been an argument, you know, uh, you know, you know this thing where organizations are putting so much into a particular staff mm -hmm. and they are worried that this particular staff will go somewhere else because this, this staff is doing wonderful. Like mm -hmm. they're bringing in value mm -hmm. in all the things that they've asked them to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're doing more mm -hmm. than what, you know, is expected of them and they're going for different goals and making mm -hmm. sure that the company is big. Mm -hmm. and you, you know, the, the company gets to that point where they're like, hmm, there's something going to happen. Like, uh, somebody else can come from another, a, a, a competitor can come and, mm -hmm. you know, want to nab this particular, um, mm -hmm. um, employee mm. what can the company do because i've always wondered in my mind i'd feel like maybe a written agreement would be the solution mm. to this particular problem but it's there other ways 
Okay. So in most cases, um, organizations use bonds. Mm. And that's the agreement. So if the organization is investing so much in you and they're spending so much in you, they use a bond, you know, to say you can't leave until X, Y, Z. You can't leave until this, until that. You understand? So it's a bond, right? Some organizations will use a non-compete agreement. So which means that... Um, uh, your name again? Omar Bolade. I'm so, Omar Bolade. I'm so sorry no about problem. that. Omar Bolade. Omar Bolade. So you sign and say, even after you leave I Impact TV, you cannot join any competitor in five years. Which means you can't work for any TV station. You can't even run a TV program. Wow. Yeah. But you have such agreements. You understand? Because, and what that is trying to say is, ah, we have you for life. Of we have you for this period. Of course, that you can always negotiate. Of course, most people will say agreement is as good as um, the tissue, you know, and, um, you know, rules can be broken. Yeah, whichever. It can be Again, it takes us back to negotiation. Yes. You can go and negotiate it out, you mm. understand? Mm. So that's what most companies do. But what I say is, even I as an HR person, as much as I know those mechanisms are good to retain, I always also say, leave the cage open. Mm. It's like the philosophy of the fish. So you look at those who do fish, uh, fishery and what have you. So they take the fingerlings, they feed it in a, a certain size of pond. As they grow to a certain size, they move it into another size mm -hmm. where they can have more room to eat so and grow. Yeah. They move to a certain uh, weight, they, they move it to a bigger one. And then the fish ends up in my pots <laughs> and then in my belly, sure. you know. Sure. So that's it. So, and that is the way it is also for individuals. Mm. One, as an individual, you have a goal. And so I'm not waiting to spend my entire life in your organization. It would be lovely if your organization is evolving and manifesting in different directions that would be interesting for mm. me. You understand? But the truth is, every business owner knows that one day, the only relationship that is permitted not to be broken, and they will say, till death do your part, is marriage. <laughs> but unfortunately, even that now has a leeway. You understand? <laughs> Every other one, you are free to move on. Mm -hmm. But always make sure, as an employee, don't shut the door. Don't burn bridges. Leave it ajar. Because mm. you might need to come back for something. Mm. You might need, you know, those that forms part of your social Leave capital. some form of good relationship. Thank you. Okay, so there is this question that um, interviewers ask, mm. employers ask, when you get, uh, you go for, a, uh, you want to, you know, go for a job interview. They would ask you, how much would you like to, would you like us to pay you, or how much would you like to be paid? Mm. What is the answer to that question? Because sometimes I feel like it's a tricky one. You know, it's a, it's a, um, it's a way for, you know, people to check how you value yourself and whatnot. So, but how should you answer such questions? Okay, so first, um, everybody has a prize. Hmm, and okay. I, think, I think during the, the last time I came here, I said something to them about your products. Right? Okay. That wants to meet a need. A product that wants to, to meet, meet a, a need. need. Because if you see yourself from that point of view, then you must always ask yourself, how much am I worth? And how do you know how much you're worth? You, you want to know your skill sets, your competency level. So this includes your skill sets, your knowledge, the skills you have, and the capability you have. Because you might be knowledgeable and not be able to apply it. Mm. Yeah, or oh, you, you don't, you don't, of course it happens. Yeah. There's a philosophy, there's a, there's a concept called knowing doing gap. So there's always a, I'm very knowledgeable about this, but they're, they're not able to apply. Can I do it? Okay. Can I do it? So that's yeah. where the capability comes. So for you, you say to yourself, at this level of competency rate, I'm knowledgeable, I have the right skill sets, you understand, and I'm able to do it. Who else is like me? 
So I begin to do my own visibility studies. Mm. So I'm saying, ah, Omo Balade is a TV presenter. She's this, and Omo Balade is clocking three million um per month. Mm. And I've sized myself with her. I think we're at the same level. So when I'm going to an interview, and they're asking me, I'm telling them, well, that's six million in terms of remun uh, direct remuneration. I'm asking for a car. I'm asking for an apartment. I'm asking for some some things on, on stocks. So so and so on bonus. I'm asking for and they're like, why do you think? And I'm beginning to justify. Hmm. Don't forget to say, I said something to you. It's a value exchange. So I'm telling you, I'm able to do this. And also, if you go into such interview informed about the organization. All right. Oh, this is where you guys are at. Because don't forget that an interview is a discussion to say, this is how I can help you. And they are saying, what do you have that we can buy? Hmm, okay. Because if you, you are if a you have, Yes, you're a product. What do you have? What can you as a product do for us? Because this is the product we're in the market looking for. Hmm. And I'm saying to you that I, I know that right now, um, I impact TV. This is where you are. You have so so and so level of uh, 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 viewership, and this is this is the challenges that you have. I have this. I know this. This is my social capital. I can. You, you understand? Of course, I'm selling myself to you. Yes. And you are seeing the possibilities of uh, when this guy joins the team. He's going. She's going to be a, a, a game changer. Yes. Yes. You understand? Okay. So why not now? And it is on that reason I'm asking for this now. We know the organization has its structure. Yes. Its enumeration structure. Right? So it now depends on you to say, ah, that's on the company side to say, we know you are what's that, but we can't afford that now. Mm. This is what we can offer. We can offer you maybe, we usually don't do X, Y, Z. But we have looked around, we played around. I think we can make up in this area for this. Mm. Most times, compensation is not always about the money. Yes, yes, yes. I, mm. I like that you, you, you mentioned that because, mm. you know, before we, we um, introduced you on the show, mm. Adi was already talking about, you know, other types of compensation. Yeah. And uh, I want to know, how can you negotiate for that? How can you negotiate for time? How can you negotiate for... Um, you know, some other bonuses and all of mm. that, especially the ones that have not been um, offered to you. You know, there are times whereby at offices we have, now, here's the thing, some certain offices would negotiate salaries to different people. Mm. Like, all right, so we're all doing the same work, but we don't earn the same thing because, mm. you know, what you brought to the table or how you negotiated was different from each other. So mm. how can you now get to that level? Because you realize that you're probably doing more work than these guys, but they're getting paid than mm. you. Mm. And uh, you just don't know how to get yourself to mm. that door. And then, okay, you want to change your time. Like, mm. uh, I want to start working from home, and I think mm. that I would give you the best value if I'm working from home. How mm. do I negotiate for that? Or, oh, I'm seeing that the company needs this and this, and I want to add, mm. I want to change my level where mm. I'm at. That mm. is the department that I'm at, Pro mm. probably your marketing. And you think mm. you would do better if you are in engineering, mm. you have a degree in engineering and all of that, but that wasn't what you were employed for. Mm. How do you negotiate to mm. meet that, um, to move to that next level? Okay. So, um, oftentimes, um, you know, you, 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 there was before I came on, you know, I think at your opening session on the topic, you did mention about a lady that found out that they were trying to recruit, recruit for a position and opening within the organization yes. and they didn't offer. And then she now found out and came in and said, but you people know. Yeah. But you people know. Of course, yes, they know. But the reason why they have not offered to you, you see, you may be good at bringing in the numbers, mm. but they probably want a different flavor to come in. Interesting. Wow, okay. <laughs> so those are the things that they say, I mean, they see. So you as an individual, in order to do that, you must be objective and open-minded. You need to be objective and open-minded. Mm. You know, all those who say, ah, you people know, and ah, you people know. There might be something else that she's not so good at. And there might be an appendage to the other opening 
that a new flavor will bring on board. Okay. You understand? So it's not about, oh, I bring in the numbers, I bring in the numbers. Yes, you bring in the numbers. But there are other areas where you are weak at. And we need somebody that has strength in that area. Mm. So you as an individual, individual, you need to understand that before you start saying you want to push yourself forward. Now, coming to employees being, let's say, four, five employees recruited and you have maybe, let's say, amongst them three different kind of pays, all on the same level and all. Organizations have variable pay. Some just have v base pay. Mm. Most times, I, I believe that organizations that have variable pays on the same level, you are setting yourself up for disaster. Mm, okay. The organization is setting itself up for disaster because your best player amongst them might be the lowest paid. Mm. And if you lose that person, you know, I, my, when I'm teaching on, um, on, on pay structure and what have you, I always use balls. So you have five people and you say to them, your target each day is to produce 10 balls. And they are all on the same salary, right? They are on the same, the coming is a base pay. But for me, there is what you call perf performance incentive pay, mm. right? So... I say 10 balls, and you are mobile a day. Day one, you did 10. The other struggled, some, maybe like three, got to eight. One, seven, the last person, five. Next day, you push yourself, I can't do more. You did 12, then at times you do 11, at times you do 15, at times, then those ones too, they will manage once in a while to hit the 10. The one of five always at between five and nine. You understand? But you, your average is, by the time we now do an aggregate, your average gets to maybe like a 13. Mm. So I'm asking myself as a, as a skills manager, as a people manager, and maybe like uh, the production floor person is also saying, then which means if a mobile they can do 13. It means 13 should be our base. Let's just say an average of 13. Now, in order to motivate, then again, I'm not saying if a mobile lady can do an average of 13, I trust a mobile lady, she can push it to 20. Mm. At that point in time, I can now variable, bring in and introduce a variable pay. Because what that does, it motivates others to want to be like a mobile lady. Mm. The mobile lady, as she's doing it, she's also growing capacity to be able to do more because then I also want to say, oh, Mobile Day is not about you, teamwork. Because you might have noticed and said, ah, this method you guys are using will not work. Yeah. So I'm saying to you, before you know it, you can grow to become like a dummy supervisor to them. Mm. To say, okay, we have a team structure bonus. So Mobile Day, Let's say uh, we come in and say you can end up to 80% of your annual salary at the end of the year as bonus. Of course, by that time, you, your own, is given that you get your 80%. But to the organization, it's also not fair to them because we don't want to raise a star. A team does not have eye. Yeah. So we want the team coercion to take place. So we're saying to your mobile day, of that 80%, Let's say 45% in aggregate, in the way they calculate it, or 55% is your individual calculation. Mm. Your team calculation is the rest. No, let's say 45. Your team calculation is 35. The remaining 25 is company. Do you know that you will work hard to make sure also that your team brings in the 35? So that you can make your 35 yes. higher than them. Yes. You understand? Okay. So at that point in time, then we can now say, Omobile oh, seems to be growing managerial capacity. She has leadership tendencies. Mm. Then they can move you higher. Then you can get promotion. Wow. You get? So it, it's, it's, it's not about, oh, yeah, I know there's an organization, a big organization in, in this country, very big one that um, I got interviewed for recently, I think it was during the, the, they called me and said, oh, they wanted me to come on board for something. I'm like, okay, let me just give one. Of course, because I already know they are in as big as, yeah, the fact that your organization is big does not mean it's structured, you know. Okay. An apple can be growing, maturing, but inside is rotting. 
So that's a good analogy. <laughs> So, and, and when I asked, before I even went to meet with them, I had a few friends, a few mentees, a few aburos and all those. So, uh, you, sir, auntie, hmm. negotiation in you is whatever you say. Just know that that is what you will get. Oh. If somebody else comes after you on the same position and the person asks for times two, of your own, and he gets it, that is it. They will look at you and say, let's let them move you with him. Say, so make sure, Farabale, take your time and ask them well. I said, eh? Really? What kind of system is that one? He said, she said, for three years, I was any more than my boss. Wow. I said, eh? I said, no wonder the, um, um, Turnover rate is high. I said, no, no, no. I said, that's counterproductive. I said, that's, that's the policy. So, but you found out that such organizations, after a while, they were extinct. Because you will lose your best hands. A lot of people will start to leave when they find out that they are mm. not gaining, they're not yeah. benefiting, no profit Yeah, whatsoever. they will lose their best hands. It's just that like you just take the name. When they see the name of the CV, ah, okay, are you? A, it's okay. Wow, wow, this negotiation conversation mm. needs to have a part two because <laughs> we are running out of time and I'm yeah. enjoying all the nuggets that you've dropped this morning. In mm. fact, the best part that I've taken from this particular conversation is the fact that you are a product. You are a product. The moment you see yourself that way, you realize that yeah. you need to sell yourself the best way possible so that somebody that would buy you mm. know that, okay, so you are selling for a very good value. So I, I say you are a product. Can you buy you? That's the first, um, the first uh, question you need to ask yourself. Can you buy, buy you? you? Can you a, use a, you? Wow. You understand? So if you can, uh, then go out and sell yourself. Man, before I let you go, I would mm. really like that you, um, I don't know if the word is encourage mm. people out there, especially employees and also employers and mm. how they can better their negotiating skills, especially mm. that point where they need to ask. That's mm. where people stop. You know that point where they realize that, okay, so I am doing great and I should, I deserve better, but they can't just, you know, open that door and ask. Please, I like that you, you know, advise people. Okay, so I'll, I'll say, let me speak to the individual first. Like I said earlier, you have to develop your communication skills. Um, you have to develop your relational skills, right? Um, I, I think if you have built rapport, and building rapport, I mean, some like, uh, you know, some of us come from, particularly in this side of the world, in the Western world, in Yoruba, where they will say, uh, I'll say it in Yoruba and, and I try to explain it, and he said, well, what about you? Mm. So they will say you do not, uh, when your uh, uh, elders, your elders speaking. are speaking, don't you don't speak back. Oh, don't okay. look them in the eye, you don't speak back. So a lot of us, they are unfortunately those culture, those new culture, national cultures have a way of intimidating and making a lot of us timid. Mm. So when you get to the office, it takes you over. Hmm. In spite of uh, how, uh, how well the organization has, has an open door culture that allows you the free way, you still find out that you hold yourself back, but you must try to free yourself of that. Then hmm. two, build rapport. Don't wait until it is when you have a need. Now times enter mobile at this office. Good afternoon, how are you? Oh, your dress is lovely. Oh, this thing that, that's happening in the organization. Oh, I heard this. Well, how are you guys tackling it? I know it's challenging from you. What are you doing? You are building the rapport. So the day you want to ask for negotiation, it's easy for you. Because you've already started a conversation. Thank with you. This and the conversation for negotiation can start informally. Hmm. It can start informally. It doesn't have to be a structure. Now, for organizations, there must be a feedback system. And then, you know, uh, you have mechanisms. HR have mechanisms of saying, oh, let's do an employee uh, survey, satisfaction survey. Mm. Now, it's about employee experience. It's partnership. It, 
Bob, like, uh, so uh, this is mind blowing because I've learned mm. a lot, and I'm sure people out there have also learned mm. one or two things from all that you have shared with us. We really want to have you again Thank on the show you. to have more conversations on negotiation and other things that people can do at their workplace, especially now that people are working hybrid. Mm -hmm. Some people are home, some people are, and people are still getting used to it. People yeah. are still trying to weather their way through the mm -hmm. certain situations that they mm -hmm. found them. So some people don't like it, some people do, but they don't mm -hmm. have a choice because um, another motivation for them to work is the fact that the economy is saying something. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for You're welcome. joining thank you me for this morning me. on this conversation. I'm going on thank a quick... Thank you for quick, having me. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. I'm going on a quick break just to take in all that I've learned this morning on the conversation on salary negotiation. We have had Sheyi Oluladeh on the show as she is a human resource practitioner, a professional for 20 years, and she has broken down uh, some of the questions that you've had for so long on the show. I'll be back after the break. Don't go anywhere.